What's up guys, we are back this time doing a sketch in ZBrush. I know I've been alternating back and forth between sculpting on my iPad and sculpting on my desktop. I have a lot of fun working on the iPad, but I can just do a little bit more when I'm working on my computer. I'm a lot faster. This sketch took me an hour to complete, but before we get in and talk about the process, click that subscribe button if you are new around here, and check out gumroad.com slash polygon for things like my custom brushes, online courses, and some other free goodies. I am constantly trying to experiment and try new techniques for sculpting. Uh, the technique that I'm using right now is actually something that I have done in the past when working on heavily stylized characters to create super simple shapes. I wanted to just try it out here and see if I could use it to maybe speed up my workflow or at least try something new to create the general landmarks for an area for the nose, eyes, and mouth. Uh, and then I immediately merge that all together, uh, working on blending between those areas, adding in things like some ears very quick with my custom insert ear brush, which you can of course get at the Gumroad link in the description. And after looking back at how fast some of this went by, I actually might utilize this for sculpting faces a little bit more in the future when I am in ZBrush, uh, just because it's a lot harder to do some of this combination stuff in Nomad. Uh, not the specific areas where I added on the kind of fatty area for the eyes, mouth, and the larger section of the nose, but uh, pulling out the sections for the head. Uh, because it helps keep the back of the head spherical while you are working in the beginning and then you can just kind of pull out that separative area for the front part of the shelf you can also do this with masks uh, but if you're just going to combine it all really quick it really doesn't matter all that much already here we have this face shaping up i don't know what it is about sculpting older men but i think it's a lot of fun uh, older masculine faces tend to have a lot of really interesting forms in their faces and this character was no different I'm just kind of going through with my standard clay brush. This is my custom clay brush that I love oh so very much, uh, beginning to block out a lot of that form around the brow and kind of just blend a little bit more of the area between the head and the neck. Then I'm getting in a basic eye here. And for the eyelids, I actually tried something I've never done before. I created and sculpted on that top portion of the eyelid uh, and then just kind of pushed the form up around the eye to kind of get that into a good spot. And then I actually took my eyeball and I duplicated it and used that form to just create the bottom eyelid. So I've done both of these techniques before, but I've never used them in combination. And I actually found that using the sculpted form for the top eyelid and then uh, using that bottom form to kind of pull out and keep separate for the bottom lid actually worked really well. It's really easy to sketch one of your eyelids just directly on top of your head. But as soon as you put that second one in there, trying to sketch that on top next to it, uh, you can end up with some problems. So just by using a couple different techniques here, I have found that this sped up my workflow, but just gave me a little bit more control than I would normally have if I was sketching both of those on top. Uh, then a quick little painting there for the eye, uh, just giving it a little bit of shading as well manually. You have to be careful with this kind of thing when you are adding manual shadows onto a form though. Uh, because it's very easy to overpaint them and cause it to feel really awkward. Uh, honestly, I think I overpainted the eyes just a little bit there in terms of that shadow, and I would probably reduce that effect if I were gonna go back and refine this further. Now that all my major landmarks are in there, I am mainly just kind of going through, working on a couple different areas, adding in volumes, blending between some larger segments, and refining what I already have. Uh, so that area underneath the zygomatic or cheekbone was feeling like it was dipping in really far, uh, which is fine. I mean, it really comes down to preference. Because there is so much variation in human faces, uh, there's quite a bit that you can do and still, you know, have a lot of it be pretty believable. Uh, so I could have kept those cheeks feeling a little bit more gaunt, and that probably would have been fine. But I just wanted to fill that in as it felt like it was pushing so far that it just looked kind of awkward and it didn't really fit the face that I was trying to go for here. I like to jump around as much as possible while I am sculpting. I don't like to hover in any one area for too long. I would say 15 minutes is probably my maximum in any one area, or at least that's what I try to keep it to. I don't always do that. This is a technique to keep you from having tunnel vision, which if you are not familiar of, is when you are working on one area uh, for so long, you just kind of get completely absorbed in that. And then when you take a moment to take a step back and look at everything as a whole, uh, the little part that you were working on is maybe, you know, not exactly fitting in with the rest of everything else. So you might have refined and cleaned up your eyes really nicely, uh, but everything else has kind of fallen behind and those eyes no longer fit with the rest of your sculpture. So to keep from doing that, you just jump around a bunch, do what I'm doing here, 
finding those little areas where I need to blend a little bit more, for instance, underneath the neck, working on that jaw, pulling down some fatty areas, taking a look at those ears as I have not uh, revised those all that much, and begin filling in some of the form back behind those, you know, increasing the uh, width of the neck as it was feeling quite a bit too thin. I still actually think looking at this that the neck feels too thin. I would probably go back through and thicken that up and play with maybe adjusting those ears even more. Uh, there's so much here that I could play with and uh, readjust. Watching back over my footage is always a fun process because I feel like I have no idea why I made that decision every two seconds when I'm watching my footage back. But it is a sketch and you really have to get into that mentality when you are spending just an hour or 30 minutes working on something like I did here. You can't make everything perfect and perfect is the enemy of good here when it comes to art. Uh, so I think the common phrase is nothing is ever finished, only abandoned. And uh, that definitely holds true <laughs> even with um, even with some of my more finished pieces, but definitely here with this sketch. I do add a little bit more asymmetry to the face, but first I create some quick hair and facial hair. Uh, for this, I actually separate all that out and pull it out with what is called a snake hook brush. And I just threw a little alpha on there. Uh, this is just a quick experiment. I just had the idea really quick. I don't even know how I came up with it. I honestly didn't think it was going to work, and I kind of surprised myself, honestly. It's very messy, don't get me wrong, but I think it kind of gets the idea of hair across with that quick form there. Uh, then going through with a couple brush strokes, adding in a little bit of asymmetry. This is really important to do, especially on organic form that is leaning more towards realism, uh, simply because things are going to feel really awkward if you keep it perfectly symmetrical. Uh, especially around the middle line, uh, which is why one of the first things I did when I created that little soul patch kind of <laughs> hair underneath his lip was I added in a little curl to, uh, you know, make sure it broke up the symmetry there. So if you're going to just add a little bit of symmetry at the end of your sculpts, I would say try to focus on the center line of your character, specifically where it is mirrored. And then I spent a quick second here at the end fixing up some of the hair because I merged everything together at the end and I wasn't really paying attention because I was working pretty quick. So some of that merged into the ear, but hey, oh well, it's just a sketch. There is another daily quick sketch in the books for us. Thank you all so much for watching. Click that subscribe button if you are new around here. Check out gumroad.com slash polygon for my online store where you can find things like my custom brushes and materials. And you all have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you in the next video.